In the Americas, no iron tools or horses. No wheeled vehicles. Yet America's people engineer great monuments thousands of years before the Egyptians. They map the stars with as much accuracy as any astronomer in Europe. And high on a mountain lake in Mexico, they build one of the greatest cities on the planet. Tenochtitlan, capital of the Aztec Empire. Larger than London, Paris, or Rome. At its heart, a stone temple 100 feet high, where sky, earth, and underworld meet. The center of a civilization dedicated to human blood. One hundred miles from the city. Aztec warriors are on a hunt. Their prey, not animal, but human. They chase down the leader of an enemy tribe. not to kill. They need to take him alive. <laughs> to keep the universe in balance, the Aztecs believe they owe a debt of blood to their gods. Today, a special offering. Tlawikole. Skilled warrior, bitter rival. The Aztecs' greatest prize. Fighting for his life. Aztec men are trained to fight from puberty. The fiercest become jaguar knights. Their weapons, not metal. But obsidian. Volcanic glass. So sharp, some surgeons today favor it over steel. It is the most superior cutting material known to man. Perfectly capable of cutting a man in two. Tlawakole's weapon, a club decorated with feathers. Not only is it terrifying if you were to imagine yourself in that position, it's also the opportunity to find out what you're made of. A fight to the death that will become Aztec legend. Tenochtitlan, Mexico, the capital of the Aztec Empire. A captive warrior fights for his life.
Jaguar Knights slice at his flesh to wear him down. The Aztecs have created one of the most sophisticated civilizations on the planet. A great city with laws against drunkenness, theft and adultery. Compulsory education three and a half centuries before the United States. A city of philosophers, poets, mathematicians. They valued art, literature, they were a very, very great civilized society. But the Aztecs believe their gods need human blood. Eight men down, and Tlahuacole is still standing. But his strength is fading. cuts him down, will get to wear his flayed skin for 20 days. His family will eat his flesh, giving them the status of gods. Aztec priests sacrifice thousands of men, women, and children a year, up to 20,000 in one of their most important ceremonies one of the greatest acts of human sacrifice in history. The Aztecs are very philosophical about death. Death is what gives meaning to life. And that by having the idea of death, it makes the here and now sweeter and more beautiful. Tlahuacole's beating heart, offered to the god of the sun and war, Huitzilopochtli, guardian of the universe. In return, the Aztecs believe his blood will guarantee a bountiful harvest. A crop that will become key to mankind's future Corn. Six thousand years ago, early farmers in the Americas turn a weed into a cereal that produces more calories per acre than any other, with almost twice as many genes as a human being. Found in a quarter of all supermarket products we buy today. Corn is the staple of Aztec life. Tenochtitlan, Mexico, heart of the Aztec Empire. 28 years after Columbus, the lust for gold is about to change the destiny of the New World. Through the ambitions of one man, Hernan Cortez. Devious, charming, and ruthless. Leading a band of just 500 European adventurers.
Cortez was quite a manipulator and quite savvy. He knows how to motivate people and the objective is gold. And that's what, of course, was the prime motivation. Aztec Emperor Montezuma, the richest, most powerful man in the Americas, ruler of 25 million people. He's welcomed Cortez and his men into his palace, a mistake that will change the fate of a continent. Their numbers were small. How could they? constitute a threat when you have an army that's a thousand times, 10,000 times larger than the few hundred souls that they brought, right? Cortez's plan? <laughs> Kidnap the emperor. Part of his calculation was, if we can show that we can take over at this level, you know, incarcerate um, the head of the empire, maybe the rest of the dominoes will fall. Montezuma's treasuries are filled with gold. The Spanish lust for plunder astonishes the Aztecs. An eyewitness reports they snatched up the gold like monkeys. They were swollen with greed. They hungered for that gold like wild pigs. The people dubbed their captive emperor Cortez's whore and revolt. Trapped inside the palace, Cortez receives word from his men. We're in imminent danger. We'll all perish unless Montezuma commands the hostilities to stop. These strangers are my guests. Lay down your arms. the most powerful ruler in the Americas, murdered by his own people. Fighting for their lives, Cortez and his men barely escaped with a fortune in Aztec gold and silver. Hey, hey, hey. And leave behind a lethal time bomb. The conquistadors are going to war with the Aztecs. But their biggest weapons aren't the ones they're carrying in their hands. It's the virus in their bodies. Smallpox, unbeknownst to them, they bring it to battle. Six months later, Half the city 
is dead from smallpox. Eleven months after his escape, Cortez returns. His victory complete. He's hijacked the mighty Aztec Empire. An empire of 25 million brought down by just 500 men.